Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories, government's plans for village tourism gets a major boost from the CARICOM Development Fund. Rehabilitation works on the Denry playing field are at an advanced stage. And the Bureau of Health Education observes a suicide prevention month. The government of St. Lucia has signed a grant agreement with the CARICOM Development Fund for the Village Tourism Incorporated Initiative. Village tourism forms a key part of government's plan to improve the competitiveness of the tourism sector through deliberate planning and management of the provision of tourism services at the community level. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede says the agreement will facilitate government in helping St. Lucians have direct ownership in the industry. While we have broken every record in tourism, the Prime Minister and myself, we've always felt that it would mean nothing to us if our people are not brought along in that growth. And that's the point we're trying to make here today, is that we, all the numbers, all the arrival growth figures would mean absolutely nothing if our people are not given a great opportunity to participate. And this whole signing um, indicates just that. The CARICOM Development Fund CDF in November 2017 approved grant funding of 120,000 U.S. dollars for technical assistance to develop a roadmap and create an associated business plan for Phase 1 of the Village Tourism Initiative. On Thursday, 3rd September 2020, CDF Executive Director Rodnell Sumer signed the agreement for a second grant of 935,663 U.S. dollars. This grant sum will be utilized for infrastructure development. We agreed that it really makes sense for us to focus the limited resources in one key area. And it was logical that that should be tourism. We discussed the idea of village tourism. I, I know the Prime Minister was very anxious at the time to virtually run with it. But we said that, you know, why don't we work with you to help you to develop it conceptually so that we could be clear as to exactly what direction it should take, the institutional arrangements. And if you have that plan and that roadmap, it gives you a basis uh, for mobilizing resources from other partners, not just from the CDF, but CDF would be happy to work with the government to help you to develop this and to anchor it. And this is what the grant uh, this, this morning that we're going to sign will allow us to do. Executive Director of the CARICOM Development Fund, Rodnell Sumer. We will have more on this significant signing in a subsequent newscast. Rehabilitation works on the Denry playing field are at an advanced stage of completion. Ryan O'Brien has the details to that story. Denry's sports complex is taking shape and is expected to be completed within the coming months. That's the assessment following a tour of the venue by a delegation recently to observe progress on the rehabilitation of the facilities following the recommencement of work post-COVID-19 lockdown. We will be getting a FIFA-sized football field, that is turf field, first finished service field, with best fitted standards. We're also doing some work on the cricket field, as you see fencing and so on, and prepare the cricket field in the future. We have courts, that is multiple courts to be built and doing the fencing. To so other end, we're going to have a pavilion, seats and everything within the dairy sports complex. So we are hoping that to accomplish that sometime October, November of this year. So as we get there, we will, give you, we will come back here and give everybody a rundown of what is happening. As we know, at Denry, we really floods. So we had to build up the field to about two feet high by backfilling material about two feet high. Presently, we are coming to the, the stages of preparing to receive the turf. We have well, the black material you see there is a geotextile membrane, and we have two layers of stones on the field for filtration. These have to be leveled to receive what you call the turf, which we are expecting actually at the turf. The people who put the turf overseas from shore will be on island within next week to so we'll start with the, with the turf area. So we are hoping that all of these turf and so on will be here. So presently, as you could see, that is we have stones and therefore ready to, to, to finish and put the drainage part of, this, of, of the field. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports and Parliamentary Representative for Denry South, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, lamented the delays. He was, however, optimistic 
that the completion of the project will bring some relief to the sportsmen and women of the area. It is happening slowly but surely, but at the end I think we'll have a, a beautiful pro product for the people of Denry. He noted that the drainage work was part of the delays on completing the upgrade, but was also satisfied that it will bring a degree of comfort to villagers who were always exposed to flooding. Done, but the flooding, you know, to keep to keep the people safe is is more important than anything, and so, you know, we had to wait a little bit to to get this project organize and, and for the two teams to work together, that is my ministry and the Ministry of Economic Development, to put their heads together so that at the end we have a community that is that will get what it deserves. Newly appointed permanent secretary in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Caroline Eugene, also toured the facility to observe the scope of works being undertaken at the Denry Sports Complex. I can see within Denry and the surroundings that the young people will benefit largely from this. With such a, a facility in place, they don't have to go too far. They can stay out of trouble. So I can see that avenue as being very constructive and very productive for the young people, especially within the community and its environs. The Denry Sports Complex is part of government sporting facility rehabilitation initiative, which is aimed at improving sporting infrastructure on the island. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thank you, Ryan. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, South CC, and the Taiwan ICDF ICT in Educational Development Project are collaborating to provide training in online instruction for teachers in St. Lucia and across the region. This is in recognition of the growing need to develop capacity in technology-enabled instruction among practitioners in the education system and as a response to emerging trends in digital education and online learning. More from Lisa Joseph. The South Lewis Community College's decision to pivot to online learning with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic forms part of the institution's strategic plan to play a major role in the remodeling of the education sector locally and regionally. The college has launched the SALCC eLearning Summer Academy for Educators. The course comprises of seven modules, which includes practical components such as video production and animation to help develop educational content. Participants are also exposed to the concepts of cybersecurity, internet responsibility, copyright licensing and assessment tools. Education technology specialist at the college, Royston Emmanuel, says the academy is also a platform for teachers to collaborate and share techniques. The concept is focused on two critical areas that is needed in education. One, an understanding of the pedagogical practices that inform ICT integration. For a long time, we've been asking teachers to integrate we show them the tools and we expect them to step into the classroom and what do they do? They do the same things that they do in the traditional sense. And we were saying, no, whether teachers are trained, whether they have degrees, they need to revisit their pedagogies and the modalities that they use and rework them so that the students are able to experience teaching in a way that connects them, not only to what the teacher is saying, but to others to, and helps them connect it to their experiences. The SALCC eLearning Summer Academy for Educators has been supported by the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, through the ICT in Education program. Ambassador His Excellency Peter Chen pledged Taiwan's continued commitment to helping Senusha build a competitive education sector. COVID-19 is an unprecedented challenge to every country and industry, including education. It has taught us a lesson that the capability of accept, use, and incorporate ICT into education has become a basic requirement, not only for students, but also for educators. Hence, I believe it is fair to say that the e-learning academy for educators certificate program is a solid support to the St. Lucia's education system in the right way and at the right time. 
Chairman of the Board of Governors, John Calix, says there's concrete evidence that ICT in education improves student learning and better teaching methods. The SCLCC eLearning Academy for Educators is designed as a response to emerging trends in digital education and online learning. The program targets teachers in diverse context, contexts, that is primary and secondary school education, post-secondary and vocational education, and workplace training. Our reach has expanded beyond the shores of St. Lucia, making the college a leader in the online training for educators in the OECS. This is certainly an exciting time for the college, and the board is cognizant of numerous opportunities that present itself and for which we must take full advantage. Education Minister Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert lauded the South Lewis Community College for contributing to the modernization of education in St. Lucia and the region. E-education, she says, has several intertwining components. Equipping our educators with the know-how for leveraging the technology in the classroom for the benefit of our students. Another component is equipping our students with the hardware so that they can participate meaningfully in the pedagogy. There are other components such as ensuring that there is the necessary hardware and of course the much spoken of internet connection and reliable bandwidth, broadband and connectivity, all of which we owe our thanks to you, the people and government of Taiwan. A check presentation was made by the Taiwanese ambassador to the college to fund the e-learning summer academy. 184 teachers are currently enrolled in the summer program, which began on August 4th and runs until November 2020. The course is being facilitated by lecturers of the South Lewis Community College. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney has confirmed that the e-books program will resume in the new academic year. Piloted in 13 schools in February, the ICT in Education project hit a snag when schools closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic just weeks later. While the e-books were initially introduced to Form 3 students, Honorable Chastney assures that the program will be expanded this term. He reiterated the benefits of transitioning to electronic learning devices in the classroom. It means that those young girls, I saw one, is no longer going to have to carry a big heavy bag full of books because all of your books actually will be downloaded on this new ebook device. And what's exciting, any new additions, so for the parents that are here, any new additions are automatically downloaded and up updated on your ebook. So this idea of having to buy a set of books this year in hopes that you can keep them for your child in a couple of years and then finding out there's new additions that's a thing of the past. The new program will be supported by downloadable lessons, infographics, internet links, and installed textbooks for students that are all aligned with the CSEC syllabus. Teachers will also have increased capabilities in tracking student progress. The ebook actually has software programs in it to help the teachers. So the teacher is actually now going to know how much time you spent reading a chapter. The teacher is actually going to know whether you did your homework or not. And with the ebook, when you communicate to your teacher and she or he communicates back to you, that becomes a permanent record. Teachers have already undergone training to use the devices in the classroom. The ebook initiative replaces the one laptop per child program, which ended in 2017. The Bureau of Health Education continues its mental health awareness activities into September, Suicide Prevention Month. This week, it released a public service announcement to encourage the use of the National Helpline 203 for crisis intervention. Here's Rajavar Lawrence. According to the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, mental health problems are the single largest cause of disabilities. Some of the major disabilities are depression, anxiety, dementia, and alcohol abuse. PAHO stresses the importance of prevention and early detection of mental health issues. As such, the Bureau of Health Education continues to promote the National Helpline 
number 203, for residents who need support to overcome challenging mental and emotional issues. It's the latest project, an artistic public service announcement. The anxieties, the worries, open up to possibilities. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. Individuals in distress are encouraged to call in to get counseling. The 203 hotline that we've been speaking to that, a mm -hmm. number of people just consider to be a suicide hotline. It's really a health helpline where persons who are feeling overwhelmed or who are struggling with an emotional issue, they can get a listening ear and can be directed to certain services mm -hmm. um, where they can get the assistance. A lot of people will not have thoughts of hope, um, thoughts to hurt themselves or to to, to end their life, but they have feelings of over, overwhelming feelings. Mm -hmm. They have um, uh, persistent um, issues with their level of motivation, and they feel like they need somebody who's professional to talk to or to be able to access some counseling. They don't have the monies. The National Helpline number 203 is a free and confidential service available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Bureau of Health Education's latest project coincides with Suicide Prevention Month observances in September, geared at raising awareness of suicide and advocating the prevention and early detection of mental health issues. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. All applicants to the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, South CC, who have been offered a place at the institution for the academic year 2020-2021 are asked to return their acceptance slips by Friday, September 4th, 2020. Applicants are to respond via email. Applicants who have not received responses are assured that they will receive one shortly as responses continue to be processed. An orientation for all incoming students will take place on Monday, 7th September 2020. Students are asked to continue to monitor their emails and the college's social media pages for further details on the orientation. Online classes officially begin on September 21st. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Acquayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci autant, Jesse. Merci, Madame, Département de Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement cette ci GIS, et Télévision Nationale, NTN, Capositeo Nouvelle à Creole, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. Les étudiants, Hort Sipawes, à Soudmikou, qui fait très bien à l'examination Common Entrance, ça veut dire, ils ont performé à des gens haut degré, vous avez un grand cadeau, Hort Representative Parlement, pour Sipawes, ça là, ça c'est pour le ministre cette ci on est à Alain Chasney. Premier ministre Chasney fait ses présentations là, dit qu'il y a une cérémonie pour le passé. Ça s'est appuyé, il s'est fait promettre pour ces cadeaux là, bail les étudiants, en toutes ces paroles qui ont représenté ces étudiants, performé plus haut en l'examination comme une entrance, et que vous recevez 24 laptops et tablettes. Les étudiants ont chaque école première en paroles là, en s'assurant sur le micro, qui performe très haut en l'examination là, vous recevez un laptop. C'est un étudiant qui recevait un laptop, c'est Kigan Samuel, qui est l'école de la TYACTV, à Blanchard, Joshua Deros, qui est l'école de Riso, et Angeline Baptiste, qui est le rocher. Et c'est lui qui trouvait le plus haut point parmi toutes ces personnes-là en l'examination comme entrance. 18 étudiants qui ont formé un haut degré, ils ont chaque recevoir un laptop en toutes trois écoles. 
avec le Premier ministre Chasney, conseiller ces étudiants pour embrasser ces cadeaux là et puis un peu de croyance et pour chercher des yeux parce que ça c'est une occasion côté ils sont arrivés bien loin à la terre si on continue pour pouvoir étudier ça oui et dire aussi ça c'est commencement voyage pour accomplir grand succès et c'est faut yo embrasser opportunité ça là fort tout bonnement Premier ministre Chasney qui est représentatif pour Sud Miko dit qui s'est dit ça là pour prendre bonne précaution et traiter ces computers là et bien pile occupation pour improver l'éducation. Mathieu Slecol Blancha, Mel Langlier, Emmanuel, oui, monsieur, Premier ministre, là, autant à ce que toutes les trois écoles pour ces computers là et que c'est l'autre article éducation qui a aidé en pile à voyage éducation. Il y a aussi, oui, monsieur, représentatif parlement pour faire avec la plusieurs équipements de protection contre la maladie corona, comme masque, sanitizer, en parmi l'autre. Madame Jody Chasney, qui c'est maman pour le ministre là aussi, pour cette ces étudiants qui pas payé à cette école là, bag l'école avec l'autre article pour aider à instruction avec l'autre façon durant la saison l'école yo. Yon spectacle pour organiser local, ça c'est local farmers market, ça c'est yon activité pour une publicité pour femmes qui engagées dans la production des affaires agricoles à cette ci Activité à quoi ça là, qu'à suivre et encourager conseil pour le public cette ci acheter produits locaux et manger produits locaux. Activité à tout organisé par le gouvernement cette ci et puis assistance et collaboration gouvernement pays Taïwan. Initiative là, j'ai apporté bon support, particulièrement femmes pays qui sont engagées dans la production agricole. Représentatif parlement pour Nord Miku, honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, bienvenue à l'initiative ça là. Et qui dit qu'il te plaît pour que ces femmes qui produisent c'est tellement différent dans oui et fruits et aussi plaisir de notre production contre ces fruits et dans oui ça là. On a Dr. Rigobert qui permet que le gouvernement continue pour assister et travailler et puis ces femmes agricoles là pour aider à opérer encore plus mieux pour espérer ses plus profits. Officier agricole, qui m'a prophète déclaré qu'il est fort assez pour encourager juste ici pour servir. Plus ça, puis il y a qu'à produire. Ces femmes a même qu'à quoi qui est déjà passé les pour se laisser vivre à ce que ça y a qu'à produire, en disant qu'à continuer pour acheter même ces produits là, l'autre pays. Travail qu'à qu'à continuer pour transformer l'hôpital Victoria pour en faciliter des traitements malades et autrement. Transformation ça là, commencé après gouvernement ouvert au point sur l'hôpital Owen King en mois de mars 2020. Le ministre des Affaires de Santé, Honorable Mary Isaac, a déclaré que la transformation a coûté le gouvernement un peu d'argent. Mais le gouvernement n'a pas eu de pour faire assurer que la construction de l'hôpital a fini. Parce qu'il a joué un rôle qui est très important, avec un joueur qui est très important, un effort pays pour continuer à faire bataille contre la maladie de Corona. Le corona. plan qui a en place pour transformer l'hôpital Victoria pour, yon, pour les cliniques. Tenez vous trouver arrêté à vos résultats de maladie de corona. Mais le ministre de la Santé a dit que l'opération de l'hôpital Victoria, qui a un service pour traiter les problèmes des affaires et qui a commencé l'opération complètement en finissement du mois de septembre. Il a dit aussi sept cliniques pour adresser la maladie et la maladie de 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 en vie fort avec l'hôpital Soufrié. Service à l'hôpital Denry avec Soufrié, avec aussi la Clary, avec le Wellness Center en vie fort, avec la tous les semaines depuis 8 et bon matin pour jusqu'à 4 heures après-midi. Service à la polyclinique Gozile, avec la tous les jours depuis 8 et bon matin pour 4 heures après-midi. Avec les gens qui ont montré le signe à comme si ils ont souffert de flou, ça a visité l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une bonne nouvelle, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour votre invitation. Pour que vous puissiez vous dire que vous avez la vie, vous avez besoin de votre nouvelle à Créole. Après ça, vous avez besoin de votre vie pour votre nouvelle. Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming.